Roxanne Smith and husband Gary Hageson are a design build team, not by profession, but as a couple who faced a gardening challenge. When they first bought their house on a stark hill above Lake Austin, Roxanne mainly gardened in a strip beyond the back door. Below was a steep overgrown cliff anchored on stone and until their work, dangerous to navigate and difficult for her to garden. When we first came, when we'd have one of our Texas gully washers, you'd see all this huge amount of water coming down the property and it would cut rivulets all the way down and, you know, everything would be soaking wet and then two and three days later it would be bone dry. And you're turning on the tap. Right. We knew we had a view that we enjoyed and Gary and I have always been interested in gardening and so we knew that we were going to have to carve out something. It was literally carve out something. And so we began coming down and trying to find places where we could, you know, have some level areas. At the time, their daughter Georgia needed a place to play. Roxanne and Gary wanted areas to sit and enjoy what they call their patch of paradise. Gary's not an engineer or architect by profession, but designing the walls, steps, and paths came naturally to him. He did take a cue from an old deer trail and the family dog. Wherever the dog went, we would kind of follow, and that seemed to make the most sense for getting down here up to the top of the property. We really don't have very many straight lines down in this part of the garden uh, because dogs and children don't, don't make 90 degree angles. They don't make hard turns. As the backyard became possible to navigate and to garden, they realized where they wanted patios. Even when this was all wild and, and it was hard to get down here, we always, want, always ended up down here. Georgia, now in college, still ends up there when she's home. Just yesterday, she was sitting down here at the table looking around and saying, would it be okay if I had some of my friends come by and we had a little barbecue down here? No. Why not? Retaining walls anchor the levels. But then we needed the plant material to kind of clothe it and soften it and, and also to cool it down. Roxanne planted fig ivy along with layers of evergreens and seasonal bloomers to deflect the stone's reflected heat. They didn't mortar the stones to allow flexibility as their design evolves and trees and plants grow. Every so often, uh, you know, we'll come back and we'll look at it and go, you know, that really didn't work like that. And it's a matter of just taking out a large crowbar and, and moving it around a bit more and suddenly you've got a whole new configuration to, to play with. As they moved their axis downhill, they added another project to the list, a garden shed. When we started working down here, uh, we, we quickly realized that if we forgot a tool, it was a long way up to the top of the house and around and in front to the garage to get tools. Gary wanted a workshop, yeah. and I needed a potting shed, and our daughter wanted a playhouse. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a measure of its success that it, it very soon became too small. Um, everybody yeah. was trying to use it all the time for all purposes. For everything. Eventually, Gary's hobby workshop moved into a shed that houses a rainwater collection system. From the roof of the house, he transports runoff underground to feed the cisterns that water the garden. They also supply the accents that finesse Roxanne and Gary's design. I certainly wanted a waterfall. We were trying to make it look as though the water was coming out of the side of the hill. It falls into a sunken pool, designed from a concrete cistern. They layered it with ponds for fish and plants. After backfilling with yards of gravel, they dressed with stones and plants for another living space and garden. When they unearthed a spring in the process, Gary channeled it downhill to water the orchard. Overall, guiding water flow has been an integral part of their design. 
While some couples go dancing for relaxation, Roxanne and Gary move rocks. It's really very enjoyable. Um, and one of these days, I, I may do a lecture for, for people on the, on the theory and practice of moving rocks. And uh, my general idea that, that rocks are primarily moved with the mind. You know, if, if you try and just apply brute force to a rock, uh, they become very obstinate and, and things do not work very well. Uh, but I'm afraid that people think I, when I talk about moving with their mind, I, I'm asking them to levitate the rock in some way. If you actually understand the mechanics of rocks, it's not that hard to move them. You can roll them, you can use levers, you can, uh, you know, you can slide them along the ground. You can walk them. And in the process, you get a wonderful workout, and you get to be outside in the sun and, and really have a good day. The rocks may not be mortared, but Roxanne and Gary's teamwork certainly is. It's not a bad way to do it's, it, actually. It's been a good partnership, yeah. It, it's it been enables a lot of you fun. to work out a significant number of issues in this process. <laughs> <laughs>